Hey everybody, um, it's Nathaniel here. Uh, welcome to another episode of a little bit of deep learning in Keras, where we do just a teeny, tiny little bit of just a little bit of deep learning and a whole lot of Keras, um, a whole lot of Keras. Uh, so today we're going to be going over the sequential model, the basic building block of doing anything with deep learning in Keras. This this is the this is the pillar, the, the, this is the most important video that you're going to need to watch in order to understand everything coming after this. Um, ironically, uh, we're not going to be using the sequential model much, uh, but it's the building block. Okay, so are we ready to get started? Let's get into it. Okay, so we'll go ahead, we'll do the super secret special IPython display what this function signature is using the question mark. We'll import sequential indents and we'll pop open what is the sequential, um, uh, whatever it's called. Um, okay, so this this is the functional signature. Uh, notice there's a couple of things here. There's two ways you can declare it. Way number one is you declare it by specifying a list of layers. And way number two we'll talk about a little bit later on. Um, note that the first layer will need to have an input shape if, if it's sequential. We'll talk about that a little bit. Um, and then there's some extra fun definitional stuff down here. Okay, so let's let's play. Let's play. Uh, let's click this little X down over here. Okay, model sequential. Uh, so this is how I make a model in Keras. So I'm making the model. If you see sequential, you're like model, making a model. Um, inside this sequential model, and what sequential model means, it's got a single input, single output. That means I take in an image, I spit out a label. I take in a uh, text, I spit out a sentiment. Now you can imagine multi-output things, and again, if you'd like to learn a lot about that, Scikit-learn. Oh man, I always do that wrong. Scikit-learn. There's there's an awesome uh, video tutorial that I've done on that. It should pop up uh, in one of these corners or something like that. Okay, uh, so sequential. Um, so sequential is going to make us a model uh, that's going to be single input, single output, not multi-input, not multi-output. So if you take text and um, I don't know uh, video. And right, and you, and you want to determine whether these things uh, mesh. Like, is the story in in the video the same as the story in the text? Right, that can't use sequential, unfortunately. You've got a single input, single output. Um, so, single input, single output is sequential. It uh, takes a series of layers. Layers are the, the nitty bitty building blocks. One of these so called layers is called dents, and it makes a model. And each model has a summary, and so we can look at that summary. So, let's just do it. So this one, it has two layers. So, so in a deep learning model, we call it deep learning is because it has multiple layers, um, right? So it's deep, it's got a lot of layers, like 10 layers, it's very deep. Um, so in this case, two layers, it's fairly shallow. You would call this shallow learning. But you, know, you can add more layers in here and make it deep. So whatever, anything that has layers, you're thinking ogres, onions, or deep learning. Um, so in this case, we've had two layers. We've got a dense one, a dense two with a lot of parameters, 25,330 parameters. These, these are the number of trainable parameters that you have in your, uh, I guess not trainable, but number the total number of parameters that you have in your model, uh, especially at this layer. You get the trainable parameters here, non-trainable parameters down here, total parameters here. Now I'll just sum this up. And then of course you have the output shapes of each of these things. Uh, so, so notice what's kind of interesting here. Um, in a lot of different types of things, uh, like TensorFlow, uh, you need to specify what the input of a layer is and what the output of a layer is. So you say this layer takes in something that's a 25 dimensional and it spits out something that's 36 dimensional. In this case, Keras does something really nice and it infers the input dimensionality of all of the layers. So in this case, this guy is um, this guy's dense 10 uh, activation softmax. So what this means is it's going to take in something, doesn't know what, but it's going to spit out a 10-dimensional uh, vector. This guy is something, well, we don't know what its input is, it's going to spit out a 32-dimensional vector, but we can figure out what its input is by looking at the input shape. And notice that you really don't need to know, it's because this guy is going to spit out a 32-dimensional vector, you know that this guy, the, the 10, the dense 10, will, will take in a 10-dimensional vector. Um, so, so this is this is all really nice, um, and you can imagine inside it's working with NumPy arrays or stuff like that. In fact, it's pushed all the way back to C++ and it's working with C++ stuff. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so you notice there's like a little problem here, and that is how do you infer the dimensionality of the first layer? 
because uh, I can always look back one layer in order to figure out what the output is there and infer my input. But the first layer doesn't have that. So in a sequential model, you literally just need to specify the input shape. So this guy will take in a 784 dimensional thing, spit out a 32 dimensional thing. This guy will take in a 32 dimensional thing, it will spit out a 10 dimensional thing. Now these layers, they have lots of extra stuff inside of them. In fact, we'll be talking a lot about that during the layers video next time. Okay, so this is one way to do it. You can give it a little list. That's how you instantiate a sequential model. The second way you can do it is with the add method. And the only thing I want you to notice here is you spit out the exact same thing. These, these models are the exact same models. Um, I guess they have slightly different names, dense three, dense four, but that doesn't really matter. Um, so adding things, so model.add one dense, model.add one dense is the exact same thing as passing in this kind of like um, array of stuff. Uh, you, you can in fact, oh, I'm dying. Oh man. Uh, oh. Okay, I'm dead. You'll have to do it without me. Um, but you, you can in fact do, do a little bit more here and you can take this model up here and you can actually add on to it. So that's sort of the power of the of the uh, sequential model. Now um, again, uh, you need to specify the input shape. Um, some layers uh, support their specification via uh, the argument input dims instead of, excuse me, instead of input shape. Uh, and so what that means is that it could take a 32 by, or it could take a 2 by 2 by 2 by 2 by 2 uh, array, right? And it could transform that itself into a 32 dimensional array. Um, and then you can, you can eat it up that way. Some things on the other taste will just need to take a shape. Uh, they need to know exactly what the shape looks like. So, um, so that's, that's super important. So once again, I can sort of show you this. Uh, doing it either way yields the exact same thing. So I'm not lying to you here. Okay. So input dim is super important. The next thing that is important is the compilation. So once you've specified your model, you have all the layers inside your model that you want. You need to compile your model. And compiling your model takes three things, which we'll go into much more in detail later on. It takes an optimizer. So the optimizer is, um, could be a lot of things like RMS pop or Adegrad. Um, I will talk a lot about what optimizers do later on, but this is how you learn. This is the, the learning technique is what the optimizer is. The loss function, this is kind of the objective of the model. It wants to minimize this. So this is uh, your grade. So this, this is how you learn. The loss function is your grade. Um, and so again, it, it can take in a lot of stuff. Um, and then it takes metrics. And then metrics are just like extra, these are like extra grades that you can get. Um, so it's going to optimize the loss function, but it's going to just keep track of what the metrics are. So for example, for a multi-classification project, I will use categorical cross entropy. So this is using uh, multiple classification. I can use my learning method of RMS prop, and I want to also check what the accuracy is. For a binary classification, I can do binary cross entropy, um, use RMS prop, blah, blah, blah. For mean squared error in a regression problem, again, I need a learning. I always need an optimizer and a loss. Uh, I don't need metrics. And then I will try to minimize the mean squared error. And in addition, you can, you can even define your own custom metrics. I'll be talking all about this uh, a little bit on, uh, but note that a, uh, a model.compile will take an optimizer, a loss, and metrics. Um, okay. Zesty. Um, we can just run that. Who cares? Training. Okay, training is this is a little bit hard. So let's let's go ahead and, and do do the initial stuff. So we'll make our model. Model that's sequential. We will make some add some layers to it. We'll add one dense layer here, uh, one dense layer here. We will compile our model. And then we will make some data. Uh, notice our data needs to be 100 dimensional because we said the input dimension is 100 dimensional. And notice because we have binary cross entropy, the target must be one dimensional, either a zero or a one. Um, okay, let's spit out the summary of the model. Okay, cool, looks like a cool summary of the model. Everyone's really happy with it. And then we can use our data and the model together to go ahead and fit the model. This is super classic machine learning stuff. This is you don't really even need to know what deep learning is uh, in order to, to understand this. This is just basic machine learning. Um, so we fit a model. Uh, I'll show you kind of what all these parameters are. It's ooh, a whole lot of gobbledygook. Um, let's exit this. 
So to fit a model, we need to know what the data is and we need to know what the labels are. This is incredibly important. Anytime you're doing machine learning, and we'll talk about this a lot more in subsequent videos, and there might be pop-ups around here for you to click on to go uh, learn about that. We have data and we have labels, okay? So data and labels. So this this is the data that we try to learn from. Uh, well, I guess we learn from both of these. This is, this is kind of like the signal that we get and this is the output that we're expecting. We have a batch size. Um, this is basically telling you uh, how many examples do we train in in tandem. Um, we have epics. This is how many times do we go through the entire data set. Uh, this is very confusing. So if our data is 100 uh, samples and we have 10 epics, then we'll, we'll actually go through 1,000 samples in total. Um, verbose, uh, if verbose is 1, it will print out a progress bar. If it's 2, it will skip the progress bar, and the progress bar is nonsense. Callbacks, we'll talk about that a lot later on. Validation, oh my god, so you guys you guys should be really excited about this. We did a lot of cross-validation stuff previously in scikit-learn. This should be really popping to your memory. So this is exactly what cross-validation is. In this case, we basically validate split. We split our data. We say 0.2 of it or one fifth of it is going to be for validation. Um, we can also just specify an external source for validation. And then we have these final things. Shuffle, you always want to shuffle it. Uh, I can't imagine a case where you don't want to shuffle your data. It's very important for some algorithms. Uh, class weight, uh, if you have imbalanced classes, uh, you definitely want to specify class weight. So this is kind of like, hey, I only have 20% of my classes are, are positive sentiment and 5% are, or the rest are, <laughs> sorry, and 80% and are negative sentiment. So we'll, we'll specify the class weights here. Sample weights. Um, sample weights are basically the, um, for each sample that we have, we, we can weight these samples. Ignore this. I've never used this before. Um, and then initial epic. Uh, it's if you just, it's, it's just silly. It's, it's just, it will start your epic at a different time. It's like literally just for cosmetic reasons. Let's fit it. Yes. Oh man. How many, oh my God. Oh, this is so great. Okay. So we fit it. Um, so you can notice we get this, uh, the loss, and you know, generally speaking, the loss is gonna go down. It doesn't always go down. Um, we have the accuracy. The accuracy is, went from 47%, we get up all the way to 58%. And then we have the validation loss and the validation accuracy. And notice, notice uh, this data is random, right? It's randomly generated. So of course, we're not gonna learn anything. We can, we can memorize the training set, and so we can get up to like 60% accuracy on the training set. But in the validation set, it's always gonna be around 50. Uh, regardless. Okay, so that's that's how we train a model. Um, you'll you'll recognize this so familiar to scikit-learn, uh, and there's, there's a reason for this. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll specify the final ways that we can we can train a model. Um, if you want to, uh, so this takes all this and it, it trains it for you. You can also just train on a single batch of data. Um, has the same things: data, labels, class weight, sample weight. It will spit out uh, the loss uh, as well as the um, Ah, uh, excuse me. No, so we'll spit out the loss as well as the accuracy. Um, it won't spit out any validation stuff because you didn't give it any validation data. Um, in addition, we can fit on a generator of data. So if our data is too big to fit in memory, we can just give it a generator. If you don't know what a generator is, definitely go over to Hitchhiker's Guide for Python, or I might link a video that's good for Python. Um, I'm, I'm never... I'm almost never going to be doing a video that's on intro Python. There are so many good resources out there. I don't see it necessary. Okay. Um, so if the data is too big to fit in memory, we can just feed it a data generator. Uh, you need to specify the number of steps in your epic because it doesn't, doesn't infer when the data generator is done. So we just go ahead and we say like 900 steps in my epic, and then the rest is the same. Um, I, I guess it also has a max Q size. Uh, this, is, this, is, uh, this is somewhat important when you are trying to do... Um, excuse me, uh, when you're trying to make your, it was speeding up your model. Uh, so this will basically say like, hey, my Q size is 10. Uh, the number of workers I have is one. So my Q size is, this is the number of uh, batches I'm going to be holding in memory. Uh, so I'll, I'll generate 10 batches. Workers is one. I can make this parallel. Um, uh, maybe I'll, later on, if you guys are super interested, add it in the comments. I, I can talk a little bit more about this. This is kind of like incredibly technical. So we're going to skip so we can fit a generator, and ooh, wow, that's uh, it's really cool. The the progress bar, sorry, I just I really hate the progress bar. Okay, and then finally, the last thing you can do with your model is you can do the evaluation. So remember, do you remember what we can do with a model? We can define the model, 
we can, uh, I've forgotten what we can do with the model. We can compile the model, we can fit the model, and then we can do the evaluation. So there's a couple ways to do it. You can evaluate, give it some data, give it some labels, give it a batch size, evaluate it, plop. You can predict uh, from your model, you give it some data, don't need a target. You can plop out what the predictions are. And these are uh, uh, probabilities. Um, you can predict classes instead of probabilities, you can do zero and one, um, zero, one. Or you can predict probability, which is the exact same thing as predict. Nonsense. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't design this feature. It might be taken out later on. Okay. I hope this was super useful for you. This should all be super familiar. Um, you should now know how to build a model. Uh, so you build it. It's composed of layers, which we'll talk about in a little bit. You compile it. You need to specify an input dimension. That's important. You compile your model. Uh, so you tell it how to learn. Uh, what to learn, and you take care of some extra stuff. So you want to check out some extra stuff, and you train your model. Uh, training super easy. Uh, just this long list of parameters, doo -doo -doo. and then finally, uh, you evaluate your model down here. Okay. I hope this is incredibly useful for you. Uh, we will be doing even more fun stuff. This, I mean, this we had to get the basics out of the way. Um, so we'll be even doing more fun stuff later on. Hopefully, the video won't break. Okay. Thanks a bunch. It's always a pleasure.